approximately 8.25 a.m. while we're hovering the helicopter above Mount St. Helens. Now, 6 is the ninth highest peak in Washington State at 9,667 feet. It's really cold up here, but you know what? Who cares? Last month, she's been acting up a little. I mean, after only 23 years of, like, silence, she's now awake again. Like, there's been rumbling to the ground, earth, minor earthquakes, some ash eruptions, and a huge lump formed on her, and you can probably see it, maybe not, but yeah, it's like growing rapidly, but she's silent now, it's all fine. Whoa, did you feel that? It's like a little rumbling, probably like an earthquake. Oh my god! This shocking event took everyone by surprise, so we advise all citizens to evacuate the area as the spiral plastic surge can destroy everything in its path, including me. So I, I, I guess I better go now. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted. The eruption caused 75% of the ice at its peaks to melt. Nearly 45 billion gallons of meltwater rushed into the river valley system. Picking up debris along the way, it destroyed logging camps, 47 bridges, 31 ships, and 200 homes in all. Mount St. Helens is an active composite volcano in the Skamania County of Washington State. The mound is 8,663 feet tall and has a crater that is 2,084 feet deep. The mound is most famous for its eruption on May 18, 1980. The eruption affected the economy heavily but took scientists to a new level of volcanology. Ash reigned in 11 states afterwards. Before the eruption, the Forestry Commission modeled out a hazard map with a red zone that permitted access to scientists and police only. Later, timber companies forced the placement of the blue zone. The eruption itself starts at 8.22 a.m. at 20 seconds. Mount St. Helens had fallen silent four days ago, catching everyone off guard. Firstly, an earthquake marking a 5.1 on the Richter scale shakes the mountain. The rock bulge that formed when magma seeped into the empty area of the mountain began to slide off the north flank. It exposed the high pressurized rock, steam, and magma to the lower pressure around it. The three materials reacted by blowing up debris sky high. It was also a lateral blast and not a vertical blast as what most scientists thought it was. A pyroclastic flow surged past the avalanche and destroyed a fan-shaped area. While the pyroclastic surges were doing their damage on the ground below, in the air, an ash column began to grow. It grew to a height of 12 miles in just less than 10 minutes. Static electricity was generated near the bottom of the ash column. A small lightning storm began, which in turn started many forest fires. Look, look, the forest is set ablaze. Yeah. Hey, you're on fire. Yeah, I am. Oh, no, oh, it's hot. Oh, do the stand there, go Overall, more than 4 billion board feet of timber were destroyed, mainly by the lateral blast, 25% of which was recovered in the September of 1980. The eruption melted nearly all the glaciers, turning them into huge volcanic mudslides called lahars. The 1980 eruption of Mount St. Helens was by far the deadliest and the most economically destructive volcanic event in the history of the United States. Several people suffered, 57 of which died were killed. Thousands of game animals had died, millions of fish disappeared from the waters, and the Water of Spirit Lake, one of Mount St. Helens' most popular tourist attractions, had been intoxicated with volcanic gases and debris. Slowly over the years, the residents have been trying to clean up the area, hoping to restore its natural beauty. Life is slowly returning to Mount St. Helens.